I would venture to say that the hottest girls in the country are in Arizona. Oh yeah, hot, hundred percent. I mean, you go to a Seven Eleven, and it's like a girl that should be serving bottles at Joy District. <laughs> what are you doing behind the counter? Let you're me save. Let me save you, sweetie. <laughs> you're at the quick <laughs> trip. Have you ever bottle served? She's like, no, please. It's yeah. like you're gonna be a bottle server, and then by thirty, you'll be a re half baked real estate agent. That's actually, to me, the most interesting thing about anybody is what are they doing after they peak? Oh, like, it's... like Ninja had his huge peak streaming. He's yeah. the biggest person in the entire world. Everyone knows his name. And then... That was a very interesting comparison comparing Ninja to bottle servers. I'm just Scott, saying, so. like, that's kind of their peak. <laughs> Anyone? Well, all right. How right? Battle raps because I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. I, that's why they rhyme about jewels, not life. Because the ice on which they skate in is so Welcome back to the Party with Strategy podcast. Yes, sir. Another very special episode, special guest. I love meeting people really for the first time in this room, yep. in my home. I'm more comfortable normally. They're a little bit uncomfortable, and I like that. Yeah, popping my uh, podcast virginity. So we'll see. Raw dogging this too. Have no prep at all. Yeah. No clue what's going to be asked. So we'll, we'll sure if I embarrass myself. It doesn't count because I wasn't prepared. So okay, yeah. For everyone knows, first games, uh, you know, it's practice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We got the Italian medallion. Yes, sir. That's what they call me. The Sultan of Sunday mornings. That's actually a good one. I haven't heard that. Kyle with the smile. That's me. My boy, Kyle Cascaccio. 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 That was a good one. That was Cascaccio. close. That was almost there. Nobody ever gets it on their first take. So I don't. Cascaccio. Casaccio. 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 It's actually relatively simple when you say it. Once and then you say look it, yeah, it, yeah. Nobody ever gets it right. It's always like an aha moment. Like, yeah, I should probably be saying that. I've only had like one person get it right on their first try. I was my third grade teacher. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I don't know why. She's the only person that's ever gotten it right on the first try. That's awesome. So I need to know where you came from. I left the, the Chicago industry in 2020, went to Houston, and before I left, Bottle Blonde was ruling Sunday Fundays. When yep. I came back, Sunday Funday is no longer a thing. It's non-existent, and we got, this, we got this Sunday morning club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was an ASU guy. I was uh, humble beginnings promoting at El Jefe at uh, Scottsdale, and then, uh, you know, I came over to work for Air Hospitality. Carmen had poached me. And I was in the industry for about, say, three years. What year was this? This what, what was are we talking? 2021 okay. to, to, to this year. Um, and then, yeah, I, I've been doing the same thing that everyone was uh, going out Thursday, Saturday. And then this past year, I, I had this New Year's resolution. Just because, you know, as everyone does, I spend my Sundays just hungover watching TV. Uh, just door dashing disgusting food all day. And I was like, I, I actually hate, it's like the worst way to spend your Sunday. So I had a New Year's resolution that I wanted to have a good Sunday every Sunday. And for me, that was just basically doing everything that I was already doing. Like I said, you know, watching Netflix, scrolling Instagram, rotting on my couch. So for me, that was getting outside, going on my phone less, eating better food and, and all these things that would kind of help me, uh, one, take back a day and actually get something out of Sunday. And then two, help me feel good for Monday. Cause if you can have a good Monday, you can have a great week. I super strongly believe that. Um, and then I, I had this idea that I wanted to, to do something with it. I'd never really taken any action on it. Uh, I saw the way that all these run clubs were popping up and you, you see that there's this need for community and, uh, something social to do that isn't going out to the bars and clubs. And you kind of say it, you, you, you realize like, yeah, there really isn't anything like that. Um, so I started that just at a wit's end with, uh, you know, ha having to do nothing on Sundays and had about like 10 people that came to our first one. It was like, t what all I had was like, t I had a, like a, a blanket and like a bowl of fruit and everyone like, we came was like, what are you supposed to do here? I was like, it's a good question. <laughs> I was like, eat this fruit. I was like, we hang out. I was like, we just vibe in the sun on the beach, have a good time. And then I was like, yeah, I probably should start doing some more stuff, uh, adding some more stuff to this. So you know, that was about 10 weeks ago. Now it's uh, grown like crazy. So how does it work? Do you have to get a designated area on the beach through the park district or you just pull up and you're like, we're taking over this space? Uh, I just pull up and I'm, I'm taking over the space, baby. Um, you you got to I got to get there super early because people do get there like really 
early to, to set up, especially to take the volleyball courts. Like people in Chicago love beach volleyball. It's insane. So I'll have to get there at like 7 a.m. if I want to secure some courts, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So you're not going out on Saturday night. I, I have, um, and I've paid the price for it. So I definitely try to to avoid it. I'm I'm I, I'm a Friday guy now, but sa- yeah, Saturdays have fortunately have to be, have been uh, sacrificed. Okay, and are you doing events on Friday? Are you still working in the clubs at all? I no, not in the clubs at all. Um, solo now, but uh, I do events. If I do do events, I'll do them Saturday, um, and then. Like I just had the one at Castaways and then I had the one at the Trump, which was great. And then, yeah, getting up for Sunday definitely is is very hard those days. But uh, doing those events just kind of inspired by, um, you know, having something to do in Chicago other than just like the same things of going out to the same places with the same people. It's really easy to get to, to make your like this big city super small and just get caught up in this routine of doing the same things over and over. And so I think that if you come up with a thoughtful curated experience it's actually really easy to sell it to people and get them to to come out and, and you know it, it's it's something that's unique that you know you're not able to do every weekend yeah that's dope i really i really love the concept and i love that you just thought of this and made it happen and just showed up with a bowl of fruit and was like all right we're shout here out, shout out to the bowl of fruit baby. and just kind of grew it from there i mean that's how you do it right like one foot in front of the other you don't necessarily know what you're doing but as you're going then you start to get a vision for it oh fuck like what do you got an ice yep. bath i see right yeah you're like all right we'll get the inflatable ice bath over mm-hmm. here let's maybe reach out to healthy sponsors or something you probably got like coconut water or someone that wants to serve up their yes, drink sir. or you know what's we, going on we got some juice we got some juice shout out to my boy juice man chris electric elixir he does a great job but yeah to what you said is i, I just like did it I, I had actually like no plan like really like set plan to start it i just saw these run clubs just popping off and i go you know what's now or never so that monday i decided to do it that week with like z- no plan you know prior to that if I, you would ask me like, is this the most opportune time to start? I would have been like, no, but looking back on it, that was the perfect time to start. So when did it start? What? I think it was like, it, it was the second or third week of May. This year? This year. So you just started it. Your Instagram page is up to 17,000. Yep. You're obviously growing and it's getting huge and amazing Correct. and people mm-hmm. are finding out and, uh, what are you going to do over the winter when there's no beach? That's a great, I, I actually get that question <laughs> asked like 50 times a day. Dude, everybody wants to know. I have no idea. Is, is it, I, I would love to say I have some idea. It's, it's tough because right now we're at like 300 people like every week, which is just an insane number. And it's always, you know, we have a good amount of regulars, but the, I would say 70% of it is just like n- new faces. Um, I, I don't know. I need to find a space that can accommodate like that many people and all these different things. You know, we have the beach volleyball, the cold plunges, we do the, the yoga. Uh, we have these different activations, these food sponsors. So finding something that can entertain all that, you know, if you have a space, hit me up. Yeah. Hit, hit me up. For sure. We and won't you, pay you, but we'll give you, we'll give you exposure. <laughs> exposure. You get paid in exposure. Brand awareness, baby. <laughs> um, And yeah, I'm, I'm imagining you want to stay true to the to the brand, to the foundation of what Sunday Morning Club is and and not do it at a bar where they're serving alcohol, right? You don't want to turn it into a party because you could easily go that direction, but then you're losing what what it is really made of and what's drawing people in. Exactly. I've had a bunch of opportunities to do stuff like that. Different bars hit me up or different people asking me to promote their product with a promo code. And I'm just always like, no, like I don't, I, I, it's too early to, to sell out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not that I plan on doing that, but but that would be a slap in my fi- to, in the face to the people that do support the community that actually want something like that. I don't want to be pushing some some uh, supplement for a 10% commission. That's ridiculous. I would just cheapen the brand. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. That's great. I love that. I love that you're not leading with monetary gains and there's a, a true value to this because it's something that you you affected you it's a problem that you had that you found the solution to and it's very obvious that other people feel the same way correct i I think that's like what i always say is the 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 biggest thing for sunday morning club is is that it actually solves like a real problem um 
And I think that it's a, a problem that will exist till, till the, till, you know, the test of time when people are, you know, going out all the time. I don't think that that like will, will ever, unless there's some magic pill that can help you never be hung over again, but, uh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a real problem. And, you know, when you say it to people like that, like you're just wasting 54 Sundays a year, they're like, oh shit. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. It's eye opening for sure. Yeah. So. And uh, speaking of going out all the time, let's revert back here. Tell let's, me about let's ASU. Take it back. Because I also lived in Arizona for a year. I went to Mesa Community College. I lived with my homies who were part of Theta Chi. Oh, th hanging shout out, out Theta the Chi. This insane house. <laughs> hang, insane house. Hanging out at the frat house all the time, doing reckless shit. At the, at the, at the apartment complex? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I almost burned that entire place they, down. I almost, they almost lit, burned that entire place down. Legit, I almost lit that whole thing on fire. You know how there's like a like a clay wall surrounding the parking lot? Yes, yes. And behind that clay wall is train tracks. Yep. We got fireworks from Safeway, which you have to like sign your name away. You have to like sign a waiver to buy fireworks oh in my Arizona God. because and they're like the shit, they're like smoke bombs. They're not even real fireworks. No. And just for those shitty ones, it's so dry and dangerous to light fireworks in Arizona. They make you like give your driver's license and shit. So we go back to the Theta Chi parking lot. We're lighting the little f flower spinners, stupid shit. And for some reason, I decided to put one on top of the clay wall. Oh, God. And I light it. It spins and it falls off onto the other side. And then like, I didn't really think anything of it. I'm new to Arizona. I'm fucking around with my friends. My one boy, Khalid, actually was like, yo, there's like a lot of dry shrubbery on the other side of that wall. Like we should probably check that. And then all of a sudden we see smoke 10, 15 no. seconds later, literally one minute, 60 seconds after that, the flames are coming up above the clay wall. Bro, I would have been tweaking. They're getting towards the tree that's oh fucking hanging over the parking lot that somebody's car is parked under <laughs> now we're absolutely freaking out we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off my boy's trying to fill up a bucket of water with the hose as this flame is just growing over 10 feet tall we call 911 we tell them what's up you and then came we, clean well we, we're that. like we're just like we're like there's a fire here so like come we get it no idea how it happened yeah exactly and we ran and hid <laughs> And they came, put the fire out. It was fine, whatever. But we were just shook, sweating our balls off, hiding in an empty apartment that was in the Theta Chi house, just in the dark, sitting there. That, that is such a, a, <laughs> a true feeling. Just every, with cops pull up, everybody just finds a random room to hide in. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. It was, it was pretty reckless. Yeah. I had some good times at ASU. Love that. Yeah. You know, I, I had many similar experiences. That was like... Uh, really fun i i took I, I was just a social chair in my fraternity i like took it like super seriously it was like a real it was like a full-time job for me which looking back on it that's definitely has uh helped me in a huge way for the stuff that i do now like i was like going to the liquor stores and brokering them deals we used to get this uh handle this drink it was called grape fleshman's i was obsessed with it and it was like for whatever price and i like brokered with this like small business owner i was like hey order 300 of these a week and we'll buy them from you for like three dollars off of like whatever you're selling. And he he we we did the deal, and he was like our go-to guy for for like years to come. And just uh, you know, I I would always just do these like similar things that I'm doing now, just unique curated experiences. Like uh, I found this massive inflatable slide for like three three thousand dollars i went to our uh treasury i was like yeah we need to buy this he's like we absolutely cannot buy this <laughs> i like convinced him i was like dude it'd be way cheaper if we buy it than we rent it i like you know just finagle my way we got it so we just had this it was just in the frat house we just had this massive thing that i was just it, it, it was the best for me i would just wake up on a tuesday like just roll roll out of bed go to the rooftop jump onto the, to the slide from the rooftop and then jump in the pool it was, it was a, it was a True college experience for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. I realized going to Arizona and spending that year there made me realize what I was really missing out on not going away to school. Yeah. Because I stayed for the first three years. I stayed here. I lived at my dad's in Rogers Park. I took the train to Columbia College and I'm like, all right, I'm going to school, whatever. I'm doing the thing. And then I stopped going. I'm I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I want to do. My two homies are at ASU. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to move out there. I'll go to community college. Because at Columbia, they they let you take 
classes for your major before they make you take gen eds oh, so i didn't have like dope. any of my gen eds <laughs> so i'm like i'll just go do gen eds at you know community college live with my boys Some hang layout. out and yeah I, I really realized like what you get from going away to school is the network the experience all that totally i i, I think that like for my major at least i, I was a marketing major I, <clears throat> I can't confidently say that i walk with like any tangible thing that i learned that like has helped me to this day yeah and i feel like unless you're like going for law or like a doctor or, like business finance you know you, you're you're more so going f for the experience you know that might sound stupid but um it definitely you know it, it is kind of like your first test of living alone too um you do definitely learn a lot like just kind of being on your own um but just yeah go, going to ASU was just a, a fairy tale experience not traditional college experience at all especially being right next to Scottsdale that was tough just being being 21 and then immediately being thrown into Scottsdale where um you you know I'm I'm promoting for all these places out there what were you were you working for Scottsdale Knights yeah no I, I was just a promoter for uh Red Hospitality Group mm -hmm. so I did their Tempe location and their Scottsdale location you know Lawson yeah oh of course That's Thomas my boy. Lawson great guy he, he, he was one of the first guys that uh got me into in, into uh promoting so Hell shout, yeah shout out to him start started the started me on my path fuck yeah that's the homie when when me and dolo were doing the strategy and dolo show we went to arizona he was living with his homies in some fucking mansion that was like yeah. right by the little caesars by the safeway off of broadway mm -hmm. and we went over there and filmed at the pool and shit and just it was arizona's so rowdy bro it, it is but it's like uh I always say you, you have to do it in it's in bits and pieces if you would if you were to live there i, I think that you would hate it because I, it's just super artificial. There's just a lot. There's just like so much drama. I'll call like my friends that are still in the industry that, that are bottle servers out there. And I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll catch up with them. And there's just always this like this drama. This I'm like, I haven't dealt with anything even close to that since like high school. I can't believe you're experiencing that. It's just, it, it's a black hole. Everybody that I know out there is like, oh, I want to leave. But nobody ever makes it out. Yeah, so, I could see that. I could see that, especially in the industry, right? Like oh, in that 100%. world. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's when you're in the industry like, and you're in Scottsdale, that is your bubble. Like you literally, you're so tone deaf to like everything that goes around you. It's, it, you're only dealing with like these same people. It's like that, yeah, to them, it's like you're going out and you're interacting with the same 50 people mm -hmm. on a weekly, daily basis. You know my boy Cutswell? I do know Cutswell. That's the guy. Yes, sir. I've, uh, yes, I, I, I know all the Scottsdale lore. All the Scottsdale lore. Hell yeah. The plan for uh, the January, February coming up was to go to Scottsdale, get an Airbnb for a couple months, just go work out there, kick it, chill Absolutely while should. everything's slow over here. I don't know. It's looking a little bit more difficult than what we had planned because I think my girl's potentially getting a promotion with her job. And shout she out may... to your girl. Shout out to the promotion. Is it a shout out? Because like we might have to miss out on this. Uh, Wait, don't Scottsdale don't get trip. promoted. <laughs> we'll so, see what happens. But drug that... tester. Yeah. No, she'll pass. She'll pass. Unless she gets a secondhand, uh, secondhand from high all from this me. blunts you've been smoking up yeah, in here. Me and Mac in here and Pert. <laughs> but yeah i mean arizona it's a special place it's it's i would um it is a special I place hope she's sleeping right now i would venture to say that the it's hottest PM, girls by the way for anybody curious well she's taking a nap shout out um i would venture to say that the hottest girls in the country are in arizona oh yeah hot 100 i mean you go to a 7-eleven and it's like a girl that should be serving bottles at Joy District. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what are you doing behind the counter? Let You're me say let me save you, sweetie. <laughs> You're at the quick come, trip. Come over to Casamigos. <laughs> I got a job. Have you ever bottle serve? She's like, no, please. Yeah. It's actually like just a tour of the one on one out of bring life. It's like you're gonna be a bottle server and then by thirty you'll be a re half baked real estate agent. Yeah. Or a or a, or a liquor rep. Yeah, that's actually a more promising career path. I actually haven't seen too many of them tra transition. That's always a very interesting thing to see in any industry anywhere is what what do you do after the industry? It, it It is a ticking time bomb. You know, it's a very limited time. But when you're in there, you're making bread. Yeah. Like all those girls make more than all the people I know. That's actually, to me, the most interesting thing about anybody is 
what are they doing after they peak? Like, oh, like Ninja had his huge peak streaming. He's yeah. the biggest person in the entire world. Everyone knows his name. And then he kind of dissipates, goes away. Like, what's he doing now? Like, to me, that's always the most interesting thing. Like, that was a very interesting comparison comparing Ninja to bottle servers. I'm just Scott, saying, so. like, that's kind of their peak. Anyone in that industry, it, that like, that's like they're living that life and they're shooting things into their face and getting implants and like, no doubt, no. they yeah. literally. <laughs> they focus so intensely on the moment of that, 100%. that like everything after i don't want to say get sacrificed but is like you know a, a byproduct of what happens in these years yeah. it's like to me that's kind of their peak and unless they make something after that and w then 100 percent. i i think you're, you're going from living this insane lifestyle like making all this money, paying, you know, paying for very little expenses, getting flown out, doing these insane trips, meeting these, you know, crazy people in this crazy world. And then there comes this moment in time, you know, where you're like, I can't keep doing this. It's not sustainable. It's definitely something that it's like awesome and fun to do. I'm sure it looks cool from Instagram. I would love to be behind the DJ booth all the time. Um, looks well, sweet. You just DJ at North coast. I did DJ at North Coast. Very cool. Very fun experience. Shout how, out to my 50 people that were in the crowd. How did that even happen? When did you, when did DJing become part of the equation? I, I had always DJed on and off um, since like my senior year of high school. My first ever big gig was at Wheaton Warrenville or Wheaton North High School. I DJed their dance, which was sweet. Is that um, where you're from, Wheaton? Yeah, I'm from Wheaton. Nice. I used to go to the Reptile Swap out in Wheaton, Illinois. No clue what that is. Lee but Watson's Reptile awesome. Swap. The Reptop, the Reptile Swap yeah, store. Yeah, they they like filled a gymnasium on Saturday morning with a bunch of vendors who like breed reptiles and chickens and exotic animals and shit. You had, so you had just a normal childhood. <laughs> Not even close, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we should hit the reptile swap shop. Yeah, I was like big into animals and lizards and shit. And I had a family friend who was. Uh, my you gave that passion up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Nobody wants to go to the guy's crib with a bearded dragon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised. <laughs> like, yeah, you got to check this Komodo dragon living in my fucking living room. Yeah, like that guy's got geckos. Like you're yeah. not getting late if you got geckos. Unfortunately not. I definitely made a big switch at one point from like lizards to pussy. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? I had to leave the lizards behind. What what, what was like the realization <laughs> where you're like, shit, like this is, this like isn't working. Uh, girls don't like this. <laughs> so somehow it's not like computing, but. I don't know if I had that realization, that, that aha moment, or if it just was a phase that, you know. You I were then, like a. I'm not getting any. I have to. I have to gas the lizards. And then it was just a skyrocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was something like that. I mean, I was definitely a weird kid. I was like, I had dreadlocks at one point. I was a, I was a very, very weird kid. I'm thankful to the friends that I have now that are still my homies from when I was young. And I think about that sometimes. I'm like, yo, thank you guys. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I should write them a letter. I should genuinely thank you yeah i was a i was a weird kid you hit the come up dude now you're now you're freaking your own podcasts uh living the dream djing it's some not of bad. the dopest venues yeah it's not bad that's for you sure you have your queen i have my queen that's been the biggest come up that that that's that can be it. so yeah i love that for you big rebrand and we were talking rebrands the other day and when talking i said rebrand we should talk about it on undergoing the my current rebrand yeah so if this is you now, what was you before? Oh, just a, just a horrible human. In in what way though? Uh, not 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 very horrible. Just all, everything that I was doing was like centered around just going out. Mm -hmm. Um, and like going out or getting late. Were you like I'm trying to fuck? I mean, always. I have to plead the fifth on that. I'm a very wholesome guy. I can't <laughs> I can't say that in the middle of a rebrand. Well, you can talk about what you use who you used to be. Uh yeah, I I I I, I love the chase, and I I loved uh, I loved going out for sure. Definitely was a thing that made it worth it. Um, 
but yeah, just, just going out all the time and, and everything else would just fall to the wayside. Mm -hmm. You know, that was always like first to me and, and it's kind of, you're just chasing this, you know, depending on it, I would do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you're just chasing this three day time span, at, like a sacrifice for the entire rest of the week where you just feel absolutely horrible. I still go out. I still, you know, party. It's just on like a more calculated, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I can't, the way I always look at the situation now is I go. Am I going to remember this like 30 years from now? Is this like worth it? And that's usually the other thing that I've gotten really good at that's helped me is the the art of Irish goodbye. I'm like an absolute expert at it. I've walked into uh, Everly so many times, like 2.30 in the morning and just like scan the room and just immediately walked out. I'm like, yep, there's nothing here for me. Yeah. It's time to go. Yeah. That's real shit. I did that last night, actually. Love that for you. Love I, that for you. I got a bunch of shots and brought them to the DJ booth, took one shot, had a, you know, a nice little moment with the homies and then I just skedaddled. Yeah. The, usually there's just like kind of that moment where I'll just like be standing around, like in between like a conversation with people. I'll be like... Yeah, it's it's time it's time to gas this, and then no, you'll get like frantic texts. Where did you go? I'm I'm already I already ordered DoorDash, brother. Yeah, it's on the way. I'm in bed. Yeah, yeah, that's that's nice. That's definitely a big move. That's a power play. Me and my girl left a wedding on Saturday night. Big Irish goodbye. Love that. It's I, it's the move. I used to be quite the opposite. I used to make it a mission to say goodbye to everybody before I left. Do you watch, biggest mistake ever? Do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? I, I watch episodes here and there. There was a big episode on like how much time you're wasting saying goodbye to everybody, oh, like adding up at the end of the year, it's like pointless. you're losing like life, you're losing like days off your life. I, I actually would believe that that's true because there's always somebody that's going to convince you to stay. You say goodbye to people, don't leave. Bro, come on, we're about to go to the post game. Mm-hmm who's going to the post game where is it just is that what the kids are calling after parties these days i i that's what i'm calling it okay I know, right. usually it's called afters <laughs> okay. I, I, I i i'm 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 very proud to say i've gone a full year without going to any afters it's a very big accomplishment of mine okay so you were a full big afters guy oh, that gives me a little bit more insight into, into who you were oh my god love the afters for me like the afters was better than actually going out well at least in college not, in post college, it's there's no point to going to the afters. Um, yeah, it's just it's you're, you're cuddled around a coffee table, talking business ideas that will never happen, um, meeting people you'll never talk to ever again. Yeah. Now just, you seem like a fun guy to me. You seem like the kind of guy that would be at an afters and would kind of like be like all right this is boring this is stale like i'm gonna go in the bathroom and take my pants off and like tie it around my neck like a cape and come out and like spruce it up a little bit yeah i've done that so many times actually that's <laughs> that actually, how did you know that <laughs> digging up dirt on me um yeah i, I yeah for sure I, I would always we would always host the afters at my apartment in in tempe okay. when i went to asu like I, I was such a big afters advocate. I would go on the go on the mic at this place called Varsity Tavern as it was closing down. My apartment was called Three Nine Four South Farmers, and I threw after so often that people knew what it was. Mm -hmm. So I'd just be going around like Three Nine Four, Three Nine Four. If you know, you know. I'd literally get on the mic. I'd ask the owner JD. I'd like, Yo, can I make an announcement? I'd, I'd be like Three Nine Four. You know, you know. Three Nine Four. I just and it was like a, a two minute walk back to the uh, back to the apartment. I would just be walking back and I'd just turn around, just hundreds of people following me. So that that's when it was fun because the club's also closed at two over there. So it's more reasonable to after there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like here, you're, you're, you could, your after is at like 4 a.m. That's insane to me. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's an afters already in place through the city of Chicago. Like yeah, these correct. bars close at two. You can go over to these late night spots from correct. two to four or from, yeah, which is a, five. which is a dangerous, dangerous system they got going on is it though because i feel like it's better because you go like Wait, really it's more of like a structured afters it's you know you're still at an establishment Correct. with like rules and, and and there's more structure to it rather than going to an apartment complex and getting crazy i mean especially in arizona i've been to the afters at people's cribs where you know there's always that one fucking weird 
idiot stick who wants to go pull his gun collection out at the afters and show everyone and you're like this is the worst idea ever everyone's that's, hammered there's cocaine here you're pulling guns out like i'm leaving immediately that's what makes the after special though. <laughs> yeah. that's really the, the 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 afters here it's too much controlled chaos like the things to make afters fun is like the uncontrollable element true um i i do think that in in arizona there's they're, they're a little bit better because you know they're still when you go to an apartment like it's still like a solid group here it's you 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 go to an apartment complex it's like five people i like being i like being in an apartment being in a comfortable environment not worried being worried about having to like get kicked out by the security guard which is always always a good element yeah yeah no i feel that that's real shit real shit <clears throat> i like that so what what brought upon this rebrand I can actually trace it back to a day. It was um, Halloween this year, and uh, I remember it was you know it was supposed to be like a really really good exciting day. Halloween, this you know you dress up, you buy a ticket somewhere. It's just this thought out plan. I remember after Halloween, I just got home, just woke up with this horrible hangover, and I was like, "This is I, that was not worth it." Like I didn't even have fun last night. What were you dressed up as? Sorry for cutting you off. That's a great question. Um, just like a oh, I had my mustache. Just like a seventies disco pervert, I guess would would probably be a good sum of words. Were the abs out or no? The 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 abs came out at one point for sure. We do, I love to keep my shirt as button as low as possible, so they made an appearance. I'm absolutely sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I woke up and I was like, this isn't. This isn't cutting. So I, I, I was like, let me see if I can take November off. Let me take November off and see how I feel. And I did. And at the end of November, I looked back at my month and I go, I didn't miss anything. Like there was nothing, there was nothing that I woke up to in the group chat on like a Sunday or, or a Saturday morning. And everyone was like, this was insane. Like, you know, telling stories, like, you know, recapping the night. There, there was none of that. So I was like, okay, you know, let, let me see if I can, let me see if I can go another month. When another month. Then I had New Year's Eve, went out New Year's Eve, abs got absolutely shit-faced. Same experience, woke up that next morning. I was like, dude, I, I really don't think that like that was, you know, like that wasn't anything that was really, really worth it for me. And at the time I was working really hard so I could, so I could, you know, leave my nine to five and work for myself. So I was just like working on some, some side project stuff. So I was like, let me just focus in on that. And then, you know, about th three months into that, um, I, I was able to quit my job and then I, I kind of just had this mindset. I was like, yeah, like I, I don't, I hate being hungover. The risk does not outweigh the reward for me to go out on like a random casual Friday where it's just like no calculated plan at all. Mm -hmm. That's why I love the events that I do because it's thoughtful and it goes, yeah, I can, I can drink and not feel bad about it. Cause it's like, it's an experience. It's something that I know that I'm going to go have fun at. Um, as opposed to like, just going out on a Friday night to like bar hopping in West Loop with the same people, same conversations, doing the same thing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because the industry right now, I feel like is missing that the most. There's a couple of places that have a lock on that. Like John Boy gives you an experience to totally. that you know you're going to have a great time there and it's always going to be what there's no guessing. You're, you're not you're not leaving your crib like I might go have fun there and it's going to cost me this much money. You're like, I know that I'm going to go spend this much money and I'm going to have a great time because it's, it's consistent. It's great. They, they've curated an experience in that room. But outside of that, there's only a couple other spots that do that. And most places are just like, Hey, doors are open. We got a DJ. There's some alcohol here. Like let's yeah. party. There, there's yeah. no thought going into it. No, like you're saying that no when thought. there's thought put into things, it makes it that much better. It draws people in. And that's 100%. a big missing factor right now. I feel like it's like super rinse and repeat DJ bar lights. Like, and, and I think that the things that w have become like super, um, like centered around just like just bottle service. So you kind of just like lost that, uh, that drive to make just like the average patron, like have a really good time mm -hmm. at all the stuff that I do. I always try to have different things that people can interact with. That way, if you know you came alone, you came with a couple friends, you don't know people, you can still go and have fun. It's not like the only thing for you to do is grab a drink from the bar and and hang out and have fun. So like we just did a party at the Trump. Um, 
And, you know, I had these different experiences. I had, you know, an accordion player. I had a silent disco on the roof. Then inside I had a live band and then I had another stage. And then I had a caricature artist doing drawings for people. And we par partnered up with uh, Aperol Spritz and Pompeii. And we did this thing with the Aperol Spritz and Italian ice or, or the lemon sorbet. And we called it an Italian ice. So it's, you know, giving people these different things to interact with and other than just like one thing, which is go to the bar, get drinks and like be crowded on dance floor is, is, is that, that's kind of like my philosophy is I love the phrase of like turning bystanders into the participators. Like how do I get people to participate in the event other than just like the usual things that you'll be doing with you're going out to a club? That's amazing. We need you right now. Like nightlife, just, just, you know, as a DJ who, who makes his money at places where people are having fun nightlife is suffering and i can tell you 100 percent that we need you and people like you with that mindset love that i'll be the savior of the city happy to do it please please save us yeah i i i do uh i do like to consider for the djs i do like to consider my events like an honor to dj you know it's a good it's a good vibe it's like a you're getting a crowd that is there for the music they want it they want to dance and it's like i think that a lot of times when i I stopped kind of just like DJing casually at clubs because there people who just aren't really there for the music. I like going to places where they're like there, like that's like a main staple, like a main attraction is, is the music. It's yeah. like way more fun. What kind of music do you like? I mean, w what do I like is a lot different than what do I play? I, I'm I, Like I said, I'm going through a rebrand, so I'm on some wholesome stuff right now, like some country you, music. Shania Twain. Of course. Luke Bryan. Yes, sir. Oh, um but you know when i'm playing i'm i like to play like tech house techno yeah i like at, at, at uh at north coast i was playing dubstep some hard trap I, I told this guy before i was like because that was the first slot to play and um i was like i, I thought about playing like a chill set just because there's gonna be no one here and i was like i'm just gonna fucking rip it and he's like yeah dude do it i was just up there just fucking jumping up and down going crazy to like 20 people They're like yeah well, they weren't like, yeah, I was like that, but yeah. they were like, yeah. yeah. I did get swarmed after I came off stage, though. That's that's tight. This this like six four guy in like fishnet leggings and like black latex was like, can I get a picture of you? I was like, unfortunately, yes, you can. Yeah, <laughs> get in here, buddy. Did you have your shirt on or off for the set? I it was it was on. Um, have you you have DJed with your shirt off? Though, oh, right? a million times. Is it not a million times better? Do you not feel more connected to the crowd with your shirt off as a DJ? Are you speaking from experience? A hundred percent. You like taking your shirt off? Uh, when yeah. I was more fit, I you wouldn't catch me with a shirt on. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, I DJed in Cairo a couple times. Um, just in the nightclub, shirt was off every night. Oh, yeah. Shirt was off every night. Uh, do I feel more connected? I don't know. I do feel sicker. I feel, I feel like I'm doper. I'm like, look at me. I'm fucking ripped and DJing. Um, but they probably think I'm a douchebag. So I don't know if we're connect. There might be a disconnect. Maybe it's hard to say. To me, I feel like the moment you take your shirt off in the DJ booth, there's a, there's a wave of anxiety that comes over me. At oh, least I there's, there's like a, I'm that guy right now. <laughs> and like, you think to yourself, you're like, I should put my shirt back on. Oh, oh, hundred, oh, hundred percent. But, but if you push through, if, if you, you break through, through that, yeah. And you fully, now you just fully accepted. You're like, it doesn't, I don't, sure, I can be that guy, whatever, who gives a fuck. I don't care what anyone in here thinks of me. Yep. That's the moment that you then become the most connected to them because you're saying, I don't give a fuck. Look at what I can do. Check this okay. out. Here's a here's a treat for you. I'm going to rock this fucking place. Let me, like, let me bless you. You have the utmost confidence yeah. after you break through that 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 lull of shame. 100%. I, I, okay, yeah, that's actually a really good point. Because there is that moment where you do take your shirt off and you're like, like no, like this isn't it. Because you know, in your head, you're like expecting it. Like, oh, what? <laughs> he took his fucking shirt off. Uh, and then that never happens ever. And then you're like, maybe I should put it back on. You're like checking your boy. Should I put my shirt on? And if you, but if you do, you you then they do judge you. Then you're you're. And a then bitch. the vibe is gone. They're like, this kid's a pussy. Like mm -hmm. he put his tarp back on, mm -hmm. and he, after he took it out, like what was the point of taking it off to put it back on? Exactly. But if you do fight through it, they have nothing they can do but respect it. 
And especially if you're going crazy and you're throwing bangers out and you're jumping up and down. That's I'm very theatrical when I DJ. I like jump and like pretend like I'm throwing shit all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. We got to get you to do a set in the backyard. Fuck it, dude. Pop up set in the backyard. I, I don't know if you can see me, DJ. You'll judge me too much. I like to use the sync button. Um, I mean, to be honest, you're you're not like walking around here like I'm a DJ. I'm Kyle Correct. Casio. Casach, what is Casaccio. it? Casaccio. Casaccio, sorry. Um, DJ Kyle Casaccio. So like I can't judge you. You know what I I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're you're just doing it for fun and I respect exactly. that. Dude, if it sounds good, I'm into it. I haven't even uh come up with a DJ name. It's crazy. Um people always ask me, like, what is your DJ name? I'm like, it's just Kyle Casaccio. <laughs> yeah, Somebody yeah. has to come up with a good DJ name for me. People always people always said to me, like, I'll come up with a name for you. No one's ever come up with one. I think you need to be the Sultan of Sunday mornings. Sultan of Sunday mornings. That's a sunset long. Sultan set. <laughs> Shit. I mean, yeah, you you have a really good track record with DJ names and DJ strategy. So I should probably. <laughs> I should probably. My brother gave me that. <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say how how did that DJ name come about? Because it, it actually it is very hard to come up with a DJ name. Like I feel like if you're not like this like big producer, it's like. One day you're just like DJing, you're like, yeah, I'm just going to tell everyone to just start calling me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, what? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot harder to be self-proclaimed, to come up with your own name. It's Correct. a little bit easier if someone dubs you something, gives you a nickname, whatever. Yep. I can understand that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was like making beats and stuff, hip hop beats. I was probably in like eighth grade or something. My brother was a rapper and I was told them like, yo, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to call myself Tempo. And fire he, and he was like that's gay he's like fuck that how about strategy he, yeah he goes that's gay you got to be strategy and i was like all right and that was it from that day on okay well at least you got it like you got it on out early on yeah for me it was like when i was starting to think about like maybe i should get a dj name was like 24 so that'd be like yeah no that was kind of that'd be like an identity crisis what were uh what were some of the options i don't even know all horrible i, I tried to forget all of them <laughs> Just like DJ Spiderweb. Like, what? <laughs> no. Peter Parker. Yeah. Fucking sick. That'd be kind of a tight name. Coming up with a good DJ name is hard. Because, okay, no no matter what, in the beginning, it's always a bad name. Like, it, if, if, if I were to start calling myself Skrillex and I wasn't Skrillex, I'd be like, that's a horrible... Or like DJ Snake, they'd be like, that's terrible. Yeah. But like, once you become who you are, then the name is sick. It's kind of like the taking your shirt off. You got to just do it and you have the confidence it. with it and push through. To, and yeah, it's, I, yeah. I think that's with like anything in life is just going through that, you know, t when you when you take that risk and it's either you, you own up to it and you, and you don't back down or you do and then you look even worse. If I always say is if if you don't um, back down from, from whatever it is you do or you own whatever it is you do, they're, they're nobody can, they have no choice but to respect it. Yeah. For sure, yeah. It's uh, there's the, there's like a a whole little saying or monocle or is that even the right word? I mon I don't know. Monocle, something. yes. A mana, mana, something. I don't know. They like they hate you and then they respect you and then they let. There's like a whole thing. One hundred percent. I don't, even, I don't that, even know why I brought it up. That was definitely something that I experienced with the uh, Sunday Morning Club for sure. Especially like for me because I had been been that guy that went out all the time. And then all of a sudden I'm like promoting this health and wellness social thing about taking back your Sundays and instead of like not being hung over and people are like, what is, what are you doing? Like this guy? Yeah. Oh my God. Exactly. They're like <laughs> you have no authority <laughs> yeah, yeah. to tell me you were just like <laughs> telling me to come to your party at Joy Roof. Um, so yeah, I, yeah. A lot of people, friends from college ripped me, <clears throat> saw some things in some group chats, people making fun of me. This will never work. This is so cringe. This is embarrassing. And at first I was like, yeah, like it is embarrassing for sure. But now it's, it, you know, it, it's, you know, I think like you said, 16,000 followers. And, um, now everyone's like, dude, that's freaking sick. I want to be a part of it. Can I get equity? I'm like, I don't even, I don't even know what that would mean. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, so, so it is, you know, but I did tell myself that same thing. I go, I'm just going to go all in on it. And if I go all in on it and I fail, whatever, people will forget about it one year from now, six months from now. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that allowed me to be successful with it was that I went all in on it. 
and then I wasn't half-assed at it. And I knew that people were making fun of me. People were making fun of me to my face about it, which understandably, if, if it was, the roles were reversed and I was, I totally would have been giving someone shit yeah. for it for sure. Um, but I think that now that it's like been drawn out, you can kind of see like what the actual mission of it was. And I think why you actually see it, it is important and why people actually do come to it because it is a, a real problem that needs to be fixed. That's great. I, I, uh, I got to take a piss really bad. Pop off. So I'm going to take a leak real quick. You need anything? The Party With Strategy podcast has a brand new sponsor. Make sure you guys go check out Rendezvous Limousine Services for any of your travel needs around the Midwest. It's the best you can get. Top notch. Let's be honest. Everyone's a little sick of buying Ubers, getting charged for Uber X's like they're black cars. And, you know, the market's just not what it used to be. You might as well go with your best bet. Rendezvous Limo Service. They got party buses they got sprinter vans they got escalades they got navigators only the best of the best make sure you check out rendezvous limousine you can find them on instagram at r n d z limo or their website rendezvous limousine if you're grammatically challenged like myself rendezvous is r e n d e z v o u s and we might as well do limousine as well l i m O-U-S-I-N-E, Rendezvous Limousine, best you can get anywhere you want to go in the Midwest, airport pickups, drop-offs, party buses, just going to see a friend. Do it in style. You know what I'm saying? Let's get back to the episode. Thank you guys for watching. So, yeah, like you were saying, you know, especially in this industry that's fueled by alcohol, we see every other day there's someone who's quitting drinking and, and mm -hmm. changing and giving their life up and yep. in the dj world it's huge too because like alcohol is so tied into helping lower your anxiety before a set or yep. whatever it is like we thrive off that shit and then all every day is like i see a dj who's in town oh i'm not drinking i quit drinking i'm i'm being a better person this and that and then they come back eight weeks later and they're shit-faced and you're like one like i want to be like i want to ask them what happened or like where they're at with it but like i don't mm -hmm. want to be rude you know so we see that shit all the time but it's pretty obvious that you decided to make a change and you've stuck to it and like you are heading in this direction with not only yourself personal life but you're creating brands around it because you know that that is what you want mm -hmm. right yeah we're coming up on your one year of of the rebrand right you said it was at the end of october Co coming up on the one year yes sir coming up on the one year it's crazy and you're um you told me before the pod that you haven't smoked weed since halloween i haven't smoked weed since halloween what what was the end of that uh i i, I had always i had always had like a like on off relationship with weed um and yeah so this was like after that experience i just told you where i woke up on halloween and i was so hungover. i was like yeah this wasn't worth it so you know classic like waste your sunday like smoke a bowl order doordash smoking i'm smoking and then i was like oh i'm not really that high like let me just get another one in got another one in and then like immediately after that just immediate like regret i'm 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 out i was like oh, i think i might have done too much so i you know proceed with my day i'm on the phone with someone and like my face just flushes like, i remember just like this feeling of, like i'm sure you've experienced that i think everybody experiences that one time when they're high where they have that feeling where they do have that freak out uh and my face just lost like all blood in it i looked in the mirror my pale as pale as a ghost you're about to faint Oh my God. Yeah. I was tweaking out. I was like, Oh, I was like, I think I'm going to be the first death from weed ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I need to go outside. I need to go get there. So I, I go in, I go to run to the elevator and, um, like my least favorite thing when I'm high is getting in the elevator with people. I don't know why for me, it's like, it just throws everything off for me. So I'm like tweaking out as it is. And I'm going down the elevator. I go, please, just nobody get in the elevator. Like, there's nobody get in the elevator with me. Like, as long as nobody gets in the elevator with me, I'm just fine. Just holding the door shut button all the way down. <laughs> Literally, dude. My, my elevator is actually so fast. Like, when you press the button, it'll, like, open and just immediately close. And I, I was doing that. Somebody caught it. I was trying to just gas them. I got one person to not come in. <laughs> this person was fast. They got in. And as soon as they get in, I go, yep, I'm getting out. I got out of the elevator. And I was like, I'm going to catch the next one. 
And like clockwork, dude, it felt like out of a movie, bro. Like I just hear these two doors open on both sides and like these like two families come out of their apartment, like one on each side of me. And I'm like looking like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is my worst nightmare. I, I, I like immediately walk away, just like walk past them. And in my mind, I'm like, they know I'm freaking out. They probably didn't pay any attention to me at all. So I try to go to the service elevator. The service elevator is not working. And in my mind, like, I, like, you know, when you get high and you like get attached, like a thought or feeling and like, you cannot let it go. So in my mind, I'm like, the, the elevator is my prison. Like I cannot go back to it. And I'm on the 25th floor and I go, I'm taking the stairs, stair time, taking the stairs, walked all the way down the stairs. And that was actually kind of relaxing and kind of like calmed me down. Cause you kind of just focus on going in the stairs. And then, uh, yeah, after that, I was like, yep let's let's no more of this no more of this so those two things in conjuncture like having those two experiences back to back was like yeah maybe you should get your shit together yeah i um i have freaked out plenty of times oh yeah 100 percent. and i sort of enjoy it there's a small sick, sick piece of me fuck. that enjoys it i don't know how you could do that it's like the worst experience ever i don't know get, getting having like a wheat like a too much from like a weed high sucks because you you know that you're just locked in this feeling for just another two hours you're like looking up everything on google like how can you come down from weed well that's the, nothing ever works that's the prison that's the that's the worst part of oh, it exactly. is trying to get out of it and yeah. thinking about 100%. how long it's gonna last that's the anxiety you're, of it you're that just makes it all worse you're absolutely right if you just say all right this is what it is and like you know fucking dive into you know, editing a video or whatever some work is for you or something that you like to do dj and practice and something like that like once i start to distract my mind and, and fall into something i like doing then i just lock into that rather than being locked yep. into like holy shit my life's over i'm the biggest piece of shit when's this gonna end this yep. and that blah 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 you know but uh yeah there's a, there's a small piece of me that enjoys it because it really only happens to me when i don't have everything else in order oh like, yeah had i went out and drank all night and i yep. was hung over and i skipped doing the dishes and i hadn't been to the gym for three days and like the compilation of all those small things start to add up then i get high and then it and then all those things are top of mind oh yeah all those things are are right there doing it for me yeah, what I used to always say is like smoking weed in college was so much more fun because you're so carefree. Yes. Now doing it, I'm like, you know, you get high, you're like ready to relax, like lock it, and you just like feel this like jolt in your body. And it's just like subconscious, just like, what what it, what are you missing? What did you say? Like, what haven't you done that you need to do? There's just all these other worries, you know, just work and relationships and, and whatever it may be. And now it just is i'm just like yeah it's not as fun as it used to be in college it was sick i would laugh all the time and i would have great experiences and love watching movies like way more it's just not not, not that it it for me anymore yeah i feel that for sure like a vacation high is the best for me if i'm yeah. on vacation i know i took care of everything that's got to be taken care of i got the next three four days to just do whatever the fuck i want time doesn't matter that does sound lit eat some edibles yeah, big edible guy. I do love edibles. Those those are much better. But I, I do have some horrible experiences on edibles as well. Yeah. How about the shroomies? You on the shroomy train? Nope. Three three years of uh, no no drugs too. So nice. Yeah. To to totally changed man. Which was if, if people from college hear that they'd be like, that's absolutely insane. Yeah. That's good. That's glad. I, I'm I'm glad that you're uh, growing. And, yes, sir. And I, and I can relate to that. Yep. Because I had to go through some some changes myself. Mine were, I feel like I, I didn't have moments of like revelation. And I haven't really stopped uh, partying necessarily. But I just, I was more hooked on vagina. Fair enough. <laughs> well, it sounds like you had your revelation. You have your queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there became a point where I was like, all right, I I really want to find somebody and like be with somebody and start a life with somebody rather than yeah. just like fucking these hood rats, bro. Like, totally. I th I think that for, for me too, because, you know, p part of that was, you know, I think as you get older, all, all people seek that as well. And for me, I was kind of like looking at myself, I go looking at like my ideal dream girl and you just think there's no way like a girl would go for 
so the guy that's doing the same shit as me like how could i expect a girl that has like all her shit together to be with me like what because i think i'm funny or something um so i was like i need to have my life in order in all these different areas to attract like someone that has that same order and the same things that i want so that was kind of like a, a big thing. Not that that's like a main focus of mine right now. Uh, I don't think I have like any time to have a girlfriend. But, you know, ha being the person I think that the that I, the person that I would want to be with would want is definitely important for me. Exactly. Yeah, that was huge. And that took a long time to realize. I had to delete tens of thousands of nudes out of my phone. <laughs> Damn. RIP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, well, um, what? No, go ahead. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Your stash is looking good, though. It is looking good. It's really thick. It's it's making me a little bit insecure, but I'm just glad that yep. you're here. I can rock a good stash. Yeah. And what's funny, I actually haven't rocked it in so long because I used to always say that I would, because my facial hair grows back so fast. So I always say I would go in different phases of facial hair, and different facial hair would attract different you know, types of women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The mustache yeah. was like I you know that. the girl with daddy problems, yes. which is always fun. That's so um, funny that you say that. I could definitely relate to that for sure. Yeah, and uh, I haven't d had this in so long. I've been like kind of clean shave, like slight stubble is you know what I've been doing recently. And I went whenever I had a mustache, everybody would be like, except for guys. Guys would always be like, "Dude, that's fucking sick." <laughs> Girls would be like, "Please shave it, like please shave it." And I would never listen to them because I'd look in the mirror, I'd be like, "I look sick," and I just did it for the first time, and I go, "Okay, I see what they're talking about." Like, yeah, like there's no need for me to have this. There's something in our DNA, like biologically, I think through the years of of, of conquerors having mustaches yep. or something of that nature yes. where we're drawn to it. It's like a, yes. there's a sign of the a power. There's a, there's a power 100%. that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Not and everybody has the honor or the ability to, to be able to rock like a full, like thick mustache. Yeah, you're sitting in the room with one of them. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I just should chills run down my body. My hair is sticking up. But yeah, I, I, I think um, it's it is actually funny how often you will go out with a mustache and you will get complimented. Be like, dude, this fucking sick. Six. I'll be like, thank you, bro. They're like, any girls say anything? I'm like, no, nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's polarizing. There's it, the girls that like them are like all about they're them. They're all in. Like they're obsessed with it, it w which is... Yeah, you you gotta find those. Uh, there's, there's only a, there's a very very small demographic of girls like that, and they're all like the same similar type of girl, which is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, um, you're I just saw that you got back from Nashville. Yes, sir. And you're starting Sunday Morning Club Nashville. Sunday Morning Club Nashville, baby. How does that come about? Uh, just with the way that things were going with the Chicago one it was just like so explosive and like i we've been saying i i think it's a real problem and it's a real problem everywhere so i think it's something that you can rinse and repeat and i saw the success of it and i knew that chicago was going to die down at some point just due to weather you know what we'll do in the winter is is hard to say but you know a place like nashville where it's warmer for longer um you know i could kind of start that up at the time that I did, which was about f four weeks ago. And now we'll be able to run that to November. But how it just came about was, um, why not, I guess? Like, why not keep going for it? Why just start, why keep with just Chicago? It's kind of one of those things where I didn't even give much thought to it. I was like, let's just go. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Like, who cares? Is it Nashville because it's close to Chicago? Because I mean, if you're thinking like longer lasting weather, Florida, Arizona, you know, something like that. I, I had I had a buddy of mine named Casey who kind of is like on a similar path as me. Um, and we had talked about Sunday Morning Club and he was like, dude, like, I love what you're doing. And I had asked him, I go, you should start one out in Nashville. I was like, I'll, 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 I'll help you. I'll give you the sauce. You know, you can use use the name, you know, and I'll, I'll help provide you with all the, the materials and, and the stuff that you need. And we, he, we just did it. We, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if you give too much thought to something, it's just not going to work out. So my mindset of everything that I do is, is make decisions quick and just, I'd rather make a wrong decision quick than wait too long to make the perfect decision. Cause you can't think your way through a problem. You, you just have to do it and then you'll find the right solution. So we just did it. 
And there's definitely been working out some kinks because, you know, it's a, it's completely different than Chicago. Chicago has a beach and it's next to, to, to the lake. So I can get my water for the cold plunge there. Like in Nashville, there's nothing like that. So it's been problem solving for sure, but you know, just go for it and, and you'll see where it takes you. Nice. Where do you work out at? I work out at Lakeshore Fitness. Lakeshore Fitness boys. We we have what I have like two of my friends that we go with. Um I I'm convinced that it is this building like a there's like running like a drug operation, a ring out of it. Cause it is a massive building. It's like seven stories. There's maybe five people there when I'm lifting every time. It's the most insane thing ever. Really? Yes, maybe sir. they could do uh, the winter Sunday mornings club in there. Dude, I actually I thought I, I talked to them about it. <laughs> he did. I talked. They're like, are they members? I'm like, no. <laughs> they're like, I'm like, guys, come on. I know that you guys. I'm like, you guys either are doing something fishy or you guys need the money. Like, come on. Let's just, I'll give you some exposure. Yeah. And maybe, you know, you're bringing 400 people in there. A couple of them got to at least be curious sign to sign up. Totally. You know? And they got some sick stuff. They got a rock climbing wall basketball courts yoga pilates studio so i was like this low-key is this perfect maybe i'll send them this podcast but like dude i literally shouted you guys out on the pod yeah we'll, it we'll clip me. it up for him like a clip shots of jamie Fitness. clip that yeah you haven't uh asked jamie for anything yet. jamie pull that up pull up lakeshore fitness are you a big rogan guy you listen to a lot of rogan no i don't listen to him i i i, I like joe rogan i'm not like an uh uh you know, listening to his podcast before I go to bed. There's definitely some episodes that I've listened to in length, though, for sure. Yeah, the uh, the newest one with Brett Weinstein's amazing. If I, you want to check it out, I, I I do enjoy the stuff that he he's had a couple with him. Mm -hmm. I do got to check. They're that out. usually bangers. Like he usually comes on with a with a. Those are the stuff that I like. Like uh, I like when he has like the the people that do physics on. Not that I know literally anything about physics. I'm an idiot. Um. But, you know, they'll always, like, tell you some secrets of the universe. Stuff mm -hmm. like that is entertaining for me. Yeah, it's dope. You listen to any uh, any podcasts, like, religiously? Other than the strategy podcast? Pfft, no. Did you listen to any episodes before coming on just to I see what's up? I watched the clips. I watched the clips. Yeah, I see the clips because, you know, that's the juicy stuff. So I figured you'd be asking <laughs> me some hard-hitting questions. I, I thought that you would. would you, you asked the bottle girls some, like, some, some, some tough questions for sure. Yeah, and they're, you know, because it makes them a little bit more uncomfortable and they get yeah. giggly. It's like a good icebreaker, you know, yep. it's like, yep. you're, you're, I mean, I've, I've, I've dabbled with you and you're kind of a pussy about it. So I don't really want to ask you. <laughs> I feel like we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. I just fucking walk out. Yeah. That, that's it for me. <laughs> fucking calling me a pussy. <laughs> no. And also the clips are edited to make it feel that way. So like in the episode itself, it doesn't seem as like. Wait, Jamie, crazy. are you gonna fuck me? Are you gonna make me look like an idiot? You're gonna clip stuff up? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's by a, his way, his name isn't Jamie. <laughs> it's a, a lot of out of context clips. <laughs> oh, you're gonna make you're gonna ruin my rebrand. No, I would never do that. I'm all about awesome. your rebrand. Right, I'm all about your rebrand. I love. love I truly, truly admire what you're doing, and I want. I want to watch you keep going. I, yeah. And I'm going to come to a Sunday morning club. Actually. All right. We'll, we'll have to have you DJ, bro. I would love that. We're switching. Love that. We're switching locations in October. We're going to be going. So I can't reveal the secret because it's going to be freaking epic. And we're going to do a dope video about it. Um, but we'll have a spot where you can DJ. And you could, you could take your shirt off, honestly. I, if I, if it's in October, if I do keto for long enough from now until then, that. it's definitely a possibility. You, you have to start keto now. Right. Like yesterday oh literally <laughs> yeah, yeah. let me guess you didn't start it yesterday no no i did but i will tell you i went to get coffee this morning and the strawberry frosted sprinkled donut was calling they me, wanted dog. you so bad it was whispering to me the whole time <laughs> whispering you sweet nothing <laughs> yo but i didn't do it okay that's so a start it's a it, we're heading in the right that's direction. a win you have to take those wins that's a big win that's a big Cause one. Because that, that's the beginning. If I do that in the in the beginning of the day, the rest of my day is trashed. I'm yeah. like, oh, I had the donut. I'll get the pizza. I'll do it. Like, what, it's what, a wrap. What is what a, what is a typical typical diet for strategy look like? Let's hear it. Diet in terms of like if I'm trying to be good. Just, just on your average day. Average day at the current moment where I'm not taking care of myself. I, I could tell you what I ate yesterday. Let's hear it. Which was uh, I worked so. 
I'm pretty conscious about if I have a gig, I won't eat like shit before because I know it affects my abilities. 100%. So I'll DJ, and then after that, we hit Bodega. I had a couple tacos, a couple quesadillas, Let's some go. chips and guac. Then I came, recorded a pod, dropped my boy back off, and scooped up some portillos for me and the lady. Fire. A lot of honey mustard, chicken fingers, onion rings, french fries, burger. Oh, God, that sounds horrible yeah it's i mean it sounds good. amazing it sounds like you probably felt horrible after yeah for sure this morning well, woke it, up like if, fuck. if you could have your ideal diet what's 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 strategies like i'm getting back to like spring break shredded diet yeah i did like three very solid months of keto and like good keto not like eating cheese off of a little caesar's pizza like mm -hmm. good whole food steaks i'm cooking my own shit i'm making good high quality burgers i'm eating high quality meat and and i also i'll do fruit with the keto so it's not really so keto. you're eating you red you're eating red meat and uh fruits predominantly for the most part yeah i mean that's that makes you, i just feel like a god oh, like yeah. five six days of that and i get all the junk out of my system like i'm clear-headed i'm feeling good i have confidence like mm -hmm. it's crazy how much that affects you that it's funny you say that i don't know i don't know if you, you do I, I i post my day here and there on the story um but i'm like very very adamant about that like that's all i eat i eat I, these are the two meals i I eat on a daily basis is steak and then ground beef. Yeah. And then I, I, I mix in fruits as well. But I do say the same thing to people as well. People always go like, do you, do you eat that way? Because like for fitness, which is on the contrary, if I were trying to get big, I'd probably just eat shitty. So I could just dirty bulk and get as many calories as I can. But the, the reason why I eat like that is exactly like you said, you feel just this, just completely different person. I always say like, there's this overarching just idea of just you eat to feel good. But like, what does that even mean? Like, that's just such a broad statement. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm happier. I, I sleep better. So I sleep less and I s smile more. I laugh harder and I'm more confident in myself. So I take more risks and the conversations flow better. I'm more mentally, uh, more mental clarity. So I'm talking smoother and my thoughts are more, you know, um, clear. And so all, all these things of just, it, it affects me in every aspect of my life and when i cheat on it i'm often reminded as to why you don't do that in the first place because it it's just polar opposite like you said you just have that portillo's day dude you probably wake up you, you your sleep shit you're tired your my thoughts back are clear. hurts dude literally okay that's the thing too it's like yeah yeah, it, yeah literally your body's inflamed mm -hmm. so for me like my diet is, is the most important thing to me because it helps me operate more efficiently on like every different level and you know all these different aspects i also feel like uh like way more insecure when i eat like shit because like you know your gut controls all these things that send your send your your these chemicals to your brain you know i just feel more confident when when i uh when i eat the way i do not because i'm like happy about the way i'm eating just like this feeling i just i can do anything yeah Oh, that's all a hundred percent real like and i can tell you that through experience mm -hmm. like, you know i'm not there's no studies that i read up on that i'm regurgitating like yep. i'll tell you through my own fucking experience that that is true 100 sure. some something that i i do a little exercise that I, that I try to do with myself is i always try to make it a point to talk to strangers um just like whip up conversation because i think it's you know being social is a skill and it's something that you have to like f like work out and I'll always notice that I won't do it whenever my diet or like my regimen slacks. But when I do do it, you know, like I, I always like love like whipping up conversations with people in elevators, like in my apartment, because they'll always be so caught off guard. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, what's up? They'll be like, what? <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, what's up? What'd you do today? And they'll, because they're so not used to it. Yeah. Like nobody does that anymore. Cause you know, you're all in our own world, AirPods, your iPhone and just so when people do that, it's always like a really weird experience. Or if I'm like walking, I'll just be like, good afternoon. I'll like do a double thing. What the <laughs> fuck did that guy just say to me? They want to fight you. <laughs> yeah, literally. They're, they are so caught off guard. But uh, I think that when you like, you know, after like you'll have that, you know, interaction, people will like feel more positive about it. But, but uh, it's, it's, it's always interesting just, you know, talking to, talking to strangers. Yeah. Yeah. My, my diet is my biggest vice for sure. Food is my biggest fucking vice. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. The way that some people struggle with like alcohol, I don't have that. Like, yeah. I don't give a shit about alcohol. 100%. Food, I'm like, pizza, bro. I wake up oh, every yeah. morning, it's just pizza. pizza. Literally. 
I think I think that drinking definitely makes it a lot harder because when you're coming home after the bender, you're like, dude, give me the most disgusting thing on the DoorDash menu and get it to me now. And it's also late night. You oh, can't you even can't get something You can't even get healthy. anything. Yeah. Any no, no. What's helped me is I only eat the same things every day. My diet is super boring. Like I, like I said, ground ground beef, steaks. It's like it's super it's super repetitive, but um, it works. And if you try to give yourself too much decisions, people always ask me like, "What do I do? What do I, I gotta do? I eat the same thing every day." Just find like those three staple meals for you. What I always tell people is, find what you want to make for breakfast. Okay, start doing that every day, and then graduate to dinner, and then graduate to lunch. I think lunch is the hardest because people you know are living their lives, going to the office in between work. So, you know, start with, do, do that last, but if you can get your, your breakfast and your dinner, and then you can tie it together with your lunch and you can have those, those three, it, it makes it a lot easier. Just take it step by step. People fuck up because they try and go all in right away. And it's, it's, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. That's real shit. Real fucking shit, dude. Diet advice. I would take my shirt off. He did ask me to take my shirt off, but yeah, I can we I, get at least one clippable moment for the for the out of context clip. Jamie, just pull up a picture of me shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> we Dude, put I it can. up there. There's a bunch on his Instagram. I was looking through them earlier. Take a look. There's some dope ones. I'm definitely <laughs> I'm definitely be getting more risky with with posting that. Just fuck it. Sure, put a picture of me shirtless on there. I don't care. You earned it, my boy. I did. Why? Why? That's that's my thought process. Is like why why do it if i can't even upload a pic yeah like i just worked out for two and a half years to not upload one measly pic yeah i'm allowed that at least some as long as i'm not like doing it in the story like every day like just came from the gym i never do that i've never put the only time i've ever posted about going to the gym was when i hit a bench pr which was sick what was it it's 300 that's that's huge how much you weigh uh right now yeah like one right now i'm super light like one like 158 um just because 300 that's crazy i know crazy I, I was about 169 at the time of doing that 168 but with summer being so active sunday morning club i like never eat anything because i'm out I'm, I'm on the beach from 7 a.m to 7 p.m a lot of times yeah when do you guys wrap up because i'm there's no shot i pull up before like i'd say 11 a.m would be a strong See, that's when we start. We do start at 11 a.m. Okay, Sun cool. The Sunday Morning Club, the name is a bit misleading because I knew I know that's how most people are. So I just want, I before I even came up with the concept, I had the name. Yeah. Because I was doing the Sunday regimen. I go Sunday Morning Club. Like I'm gonna do that. And I was a, I was stuck on the name. And I tried to like do something because I was like maybe I should do it at 12. And I was like Sunday Afternoon Club. I was like that doesn't doesn't sound it doesn't have a ring to it. Doesn't hit right. So I I just did it barely enough to where I can call it morning. So. That's good. But we wrap up at around, it depends. We I say 3 p.m., but uh, people like to stay there a lot later, so I'll, I'll let them stay. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't want to infringe on their fun. And do you get to enjoy it at all, or, or are you kind of frantically making sure that everything's happening and, and you know all the activations that mm -hmm. you're setting up are working, and are you, are you more so working than you are getting to enjoy it? I think in the beginning, it was, you know, <clears throat> In the beginning, it was a lot more fun just because, yeah, there was less things to worry about. Now, I, I, I do like to make an effort of meeting, introducing myself to everybody that comes. Because, uh, you know, I, I, want, I want to, one, thank them and hear how they heard about us. You know, what are they usually doing on Sundays? Le learn a little about them. And, you know, I think that's how you really build the community is getting to know the people that are actually coming out of this thing that you're doing. Um, so I do still enjoy it 100%. It's fun. When I first was starting off with it, it was a lot more like I could do the stuff that I want to do. So I would play volleyball like the entire time. We we have a pretty serious crew of people that play volleyball and it gets like really intense. So I'd, I'd be playing for a long time. Now I'll kind of wait till everybody leaves. And then that crew that, you know, plays pretty intensely with me will we'll stay after and, and we'll get some good games in. Nice. How do you like if I pull up and I want to play volleyball, I got to sign up or something or I got to have Just a team? Just first come, or... first serve. Uh I like to, I, I like to curate it as just like a hangout. Like, I don't want to like make it too like corporate and like right. too many systems. It's like, we got the ice bath. You want to go in, go in. You want to do yoga, do yoga. It's, it's, it, 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 I don't want it to become too much of this organized thing. Cause then it almost loses that authenticity because the thing about it is it's just a hangout. 
you know, come hang out on the beach, come get outside. It's not like come do this station. And then at seven 30, we're doing this. And then you have to do this. It's like, dude, you're here for yourself. Enjoy yourself. Do as is. Um, I'm sure some people would appreciate me putting some, some structure into the volleyball because <laughs> they're like, some people are shy. They're like, how do I get into a game? I'm like, just go out there. Yeah. But, but that's good. Teach them how to be more social, make them, um, on, you know, hundred percent living in that uncomfort is how you get comfortable. Absolutely. That That's like a point that I, I always reiterate to people. Cause I do get that a lot of like, I want to come out, but I'm nervous. I, you know, I'm shy. I just moved to the city. I don't know anybody. And I go, well, you're not going to meet anybody. You're not going to make friends if, if you don't put yourself out there, you know, and even that in its own is a risk. So with anything in life, the only way to be rewarded is to take risks. So, you know, you just got to put yourself out there. I always say the people are thinking the exact same thoughts as you, but the reality is, is everybody's too busy thinking about themselves to even notice what it is that you think you're doing or how it is you think you're embarrassing yourself. It's really, really easy to get caught up in our own world and think like everybody's thinking about us when reality, everybody's just thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came, when I was in the car right here, definitely a little, some nerves for sure. I was like, oh, what if I say something? And then you just kind of have that realization like nobody's even going to remember a month from now. So yeah. who cares? Yeah. That's real shit. Fucking just and dropping some wisdom on this bitch. That's kind of like my favorite part about committing fully to the pod and doing it every single week, twice a week, is sometimes I do, you know, an episode comes out and I'm like, fuck, I hated that episode. Yep. Like it, it, it eats away at me. But then I know another one comes out next week and another one comes out after that and another one comes out after that and I'm filming one tomorrow so I'll be better. You know what I mean? Like, totally. You just kind of, yeah. you just eat that. 100%. And it's like, whatever, we're moving on. I mean, even for you, like, I'm sure that starting the podcast in its own was a risk. You know, like, you know, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, always doing things where you're putting yourself out on the internet with such like free, you know, speaking so freely, there's always that room to judge me or like, he thinks he's, he thinks he's so cool that he could start a podcast. He's so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, it's like what we were saying earlier. You commit to something so much people can do nothing but respect it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's crazy. It all ties back. Like there's really only like so many principles that are so true. Literally. And, and they all are represented in different ways in different situations mm -hmm. and things. And it's like, it always ties back to that. It's like balance, right? Like anytime I'm, I'm overthinking shit, I can always relate it back to balance like that's all it is at the end of the day you're doing too much of something you you, you either gotta completely stop it or remind yourself that you need fucking balance like mm -hmm. overdoing anything can turn into a disaster 100 percent. I, I think that that's like definitely there's something and that kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about how the the djs and then like ah oh, i quit drinking and then eight weeks later they're full crash course for me, I, I've never said that I like quit drinking. I still do plenty. Uh, you know, I go out all the time. I just do it less. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is that balance. So, you know, work hard, play hard. And so I usually will just kind of like work until I can't. And it's like, okay, I feel burnt out. Like, let me take a day off or, you know, I'll, I, I won't go out, you know, and I'll wait for something big. And if that something doesn't come and I'm like, you know, got the itch. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Let's let loose. But it, it, it is, I, I do always say that. I think everything in life, um, is is definitely about balance hell yeah we should go have a night we should go have a friday night let's freaking rip it dude we should go fucking rip it a little bit have a good time i i do late night at liquor so a lot of times if i'm not working before i'll go out at like 11 12 schmooze it up it. go see some people what's one of your favorite spots to go joy district till i die I represent shout out joy i love joy district who the fuck is carmen rossi <laughs> who the fuck is carmen rossi <laughs> fuck that dude <laughs> Love Carmen. No, he, yeah, I, I have such I have such deep roots to that place. I, I I always say it. People people always come from out of town. Like, where do I go? I go to district. I think for the summertime, especially, it's like the most unique place. I it, think that's why it's been around for so long. Mm -hmm. They do a great job uh, making sure that they keep it fresh too. They, they yeah. They keep the the um, atmosphere new. Totally. They're they're always redoing shit on the roof, redoing mm -hmm. shit in the, the club, decor. moving the booth, yep. doing the lights, adding things. They definitely do a good job with yeah. that and I respect that. Because some people just ride the shit till the wheels fall off. Yeah. 
and and that's like not like a that's not even just like a business plan it's just like yep let's open up a bar put a dj alcohol I, I i think that carmen is so successful in hospitality because he's super strategical about all these things and he's like very like business minded you know i think that w one of the things that we did that was super cool was uh the studio 54 pop-up which is you know that's a unique thing that you know you can look for toward once a year and it's a cool theme and these different activations and these interactive elements and you know we got the confetti and the sparklers and these people walking around on stilts and you know stuff like that keeps a place fresh they, they they do a good job of that i think that's why why they've been relevant for so long mm -hmm. yeah he crushes shots to carmen i want to get him back on the pod the but yeah i don't want to uh, hold you up too much you're a busy guy you got a plan for next coming up sunday yes sir I, I might commit right now on camera to coming. I got to talk to... I'm calling Cap. I got to talk to the warden, but if she approves, we're there. Okay. I got to go. I mean, what, what stopped me? I don't have anything going on. You know what I I'm saying? I don't know, being hungover. We'll have to see. We'll no, have, we'll I don't really get that hungover, to be honest with you. Well, That's not lucky. a big thing for me. That's insane. That's like my... I, I'm like a, the biggest pussy ever when I'm hungry. Everything in my life stops. Yeah, I got a couple friends like that. And I've never really felt, I've had a couple bad hangovers and I'm like, thank God that this is not a regular occurrence. Yeah. But I do like to, uh, I like to get drunk early and then I like to kind of smoke weed the rest of the night and coast. So fucking sick. Dude. <laughs> fucking Jamie clip that. <laughs> it's going to be the fucking intro. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get something good. we this is a great pod. Thank you for coming. Love I appreciate that. you Super coming all the way out here. here. Yeah. Thank you. We'll Wait, do it. I have a question. What would you rate my first ever podcast on a scale from one to 10? I think that you were fantastic. There's no, there, there's nothing that I could say went wrong or, or you could improve on. I mean, what a real podcast is, is just representing yourself as authentically as possible. Love that and so uh, a numerical think, value yeah i think that you are uh you did that well number out of 10 out of 10 i'd have to say eight and a half i'll take that you did kind of puss out when i asked you about getting laid in arizona yep if I, you, I can we can end that. with your body count if you want <laughs> no <laughs> that's the clip <laughs> <laughs> jamie jamie don't clip that jamie do not fucking clip that so yeah i mean we're at a wholesome we're at like a wholesome seven very wholesome seven yeah this was yeah this is it was a wholesome pod there's definitely a lot good information and that's love that. that's great and people should take advantage of that i'm glad that everybody got to learn the real me this was really exciting yeah tight i'm excited i'm excited to see what comes i want to have you back maybe with a guest or something okay. it's always fun to have two people who like know each other well and have a good rapport and like inside yep. jokes and you know we get a little we'll have loose. to get nico on the pod nico which nico one nico Plalis. who's that he, you, do i know he, him yeah you, you did he's the guy from f boy island you did a call with him i did a call with him yeah for a podcast that's what he said nico who Plalis? called him i think you did no maybe, maybe he's talking about someone else nico he's from Chicago? From Chicago. Was on F-Boy Island. Island. I might look like a total asshole right now and may know who that is, and I just got to see his face because I'm bad with names. He's but a I cool don't... guy. You should check him out. He's funny. He'd be a great guy to have on the pod. Me and yeah. him would rift well together. You guys are tight? Oh, yeah. Oh, very let's close. do it for sure. Me yeah. and him, that's our, like, I don't know. We have a very good rift together. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We'll get him on. All right, podcast. This was fun. <laughs> I'm the host now, so I'm going to do the outro. We'll see you next week. We'll see strategy at Sunday Morning Club. Probably not. Um, thank you for having me. And shout out to Jamie. Shout out, Jamie. Diamond Cut the God. Make sure if you're on the YouTube, you subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment on the video. Like it as well. Thank you. Yep. Algorithm activating activity. That's what we like to see here. We'll see you guys next time. Subscribe or fuck you. Subscribe or die. <laughs> Literally die. <laughs> Well, all right, all right. Battle raps, cause I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. Ha. That's why they rhyme about jewels, not life, cause the ice on which they skating is so thin. That's what I love about the human soul, it'll usually show when the truth ain't told. Ha. Use a lie.